So first of all, I just wanted to start with, we, we all talked about this, these, these uh, convolutional models, right? I just wanted to show you some examples. This is from uh, Krzyzewski's net. And you can sort of see at the variety of different objects, right? And how you can recognize things, like can recognize this is a container ship, or sort of makes a mistake here recognizing that this is convertible versus grill, right? If you look at this guy, recognizes it as a Madagascar cat. Oh, sorry, recognizes a squirrel monkey, but the true label is a Madagascar cat, right? So you can see that these kinds of models are not, you know, they're not uh, simplistic. And if you look at these kinds of architectures, to some extent it's amazing, right? Because I, I remember either from Alex or Jan basically saying these are just uh, uh, convolutional filters, a little bit of nonlinearity there, trained by stochastic gradient descent, just architectural choices, and you get these amazing results, right? So that's quite, uh, I think that's quite impressive. Um, on the other hand, it's sort of a little bit, uh, um, uh, you know, there's no notion of generative aspect. There's no notion of uh, scene understanding, right? Somehow all of these guys are doing something interesting, right? So uh, what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about Boltzmann machines just very briefly. And, and, and I sort of responding to Jan's comment is that the nice thing about being in academia is that you can still work on something that doesn't work, right? So I'm going to talk about something that doesn't work um, yet. Uh, so, uh, uh, just as an example of a, a, a boss machine, so I'm trying to go beyond the feed-forward architectures. But look at uh, models. A lot of these models are trying to find low-level representation and trying to find high-level representation, right? It's the idea behind these deep learning models. And, you know, there's been some work done on how can we do it in unsupervised fashion, right? Without uh, building these discriminative models. Um, and if you look at the mathematical formulation of this model, this is nothing more than a, a market random field. <coughs> Uh, graphical models. And you sort of we, we have a good understanding of what these models are. We can write the probability distribution. Uh, we can build the particular architecture. Uh, 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 one nice thing about uh, uh, Boltzmann machine kind of models is that there is a very natural notion of bottom up and top down. If you look at the probability of a particular latent variable or hidden unit being on, it just depends on what's coming from above and what's coming from below. Um, and it's unlike many of the feed forward architectures, sort of with the theme of going beyond feed forward architectures. Um, you can do a lot of interesting thing with these models. This is one particular example where if you take bag of words, something that's not vision specific, but if you take bag of words and you look at the low level representation, what the model is finding, this is done fitting on uh, Reuters data sets just using bag of words representation from, from web pages, sort of finds this interesting structure. Uh, and I always like to point out that you, know, you find topics like European community placed next to disasters and accidents, right? So there is a lot of uh, uh, correlations between words that the model is finding. You can also apply these kinds of models uh, to uh, other kinds of data, like right? so for example, on Netflix uh, uh, data. This is done, uh, uh, people working a lot on matrix factorization models and similar kinds of structure that you can extract looking at the high level representations. It does find interesting structure that, that you see uh, you see in the data. And, and just to point out that, uh, you know, these kinds of models where you have bottom up, top down have been to some extent used successfully by uh, uh, people at Cambridge by trying to build models of shapes as a prime models for segmentation. There's been some work on trying to do a little bit more neuroscience uh, style uh, applications, even though I don't really know what, what they're doing. Um, but it seems that there is notion of somehow propagating messages up and down and then in the model does give them uh, uh, some, 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 uh, to some extent, interesting, interesting results, right? But what I would like to say is that there is also need to go beyond uh, standard architectures, right? Standard feed-forward architectures. Let me give you an example. If you look at this data set, this is just looking at extreme uh, uh, illumination variations in faces. If you just take these kinds of data sets and feed it to, to the deep belief network and ask whether you can recognize uh, these faces, these models do quite poorly. Right, so, um, and no, surprisingly, there is some, some particular structure uh, uh, in the faces. And what we would like to do is we would like to extract some kind of more meaningful representation from the data. So we'd like to extract something that's illumination dependent, right? And that's an vision problem. That's no trying to separate shape from shading, right? Uh, and, and we can do that by basically putting a little bit of prime knowledge into the architecture of the models, right? Where we can say, well, this is basically a Lambertian model. Right? But we can put uh, interesting kinds of priors on, on uh, um, the albedo versus surface normals or the light uh, direction. Right? So by putting a little bit of prior knowledge into architecture, we can actually uh, build models that can uh, uh, extract meaningful representation from that data. Right? So we're giving our models a little bit more. 
um, and everything here can be inferred and there, there's a little bit of transfer learning happening there. But we can do fun things just based on a single test example. This is a test image that the model was no, never trained on. You can sort of infer what the image albedo is. And you can do fun things because these are generative models. You can do fun things like face relighting, right, based on a single example. And these models do work fairly well uh, when, you, when you compare them to standard, uh, standard models. There is also uh, an interesting aspect in the deep learning community is that whether you can build uh, the quality of features. How do you know that the representations you're learning are meaningful? Well, one way of doing it is to try to see whether these representations can be used for other tasks, right, or for learning new classes. Right? And in typical uh, 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 vision communities, right, we're looking at uh, uh, standard classification problems where you say, well, I train on thousands of images of segways, thousands of images of motorcycles, and then I'm trying to separate which one, what that is. Right? But what about trying to uh, build models where you may have millions of unlabeled images, you might have some labeled examples, and then somehow build representations that can allow you to quickly learn something about new classes. Right? And that's, a, that's an interesting problem of, of transfer learning. And the question is, does, does the deep learning allow you to do that? I think there hasn't been much research done in, uh, in that direction. Uh, and then you're trying to test what that is, right? Um, and, and, and you can do these things. I think Josh might talk a little bit more about this, uh, where you're trying to learn these low-level features, uh, high-level features from the deep learning. But then at the high level, you're trying to build uh, some form of hierarchical organization, trying to basically figure out which objects go together. Uh, right, and you can specify, well, these oranges and peer, they should have some kind of uh, uh, shared high-level features, uh, right? And you can also do fun things like, based on a few examples, see how you can generate data from, from the model. And this is done by just basically looking at three images and trying to generate. And it's interesting here, uh, I'm not making any assumptions about images, right? I'm not making any assumptions about the, these images. This is just something that the model is learning from, uh, uh, from the data. Uh, and then finally, just one other thing to, to note is that whenever we're trying to do transfer loading, we're trying to do uh, um, uh, structured learning, I think that trying to, uh, 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 taking multiple modalities into account is, is a big challenge. Um, and in particular, in this case, we would like to take images and text and try to figure out some representation for both of these modalities. Right? And, and there are a few challenges which I think is, is, is uh, uh, sort of advocates work for, for generative models rather than discriminative models, is that if you look at the images, they're typically represented as dense. If you look at text, you're typically representing it as a sparse representation, right? having word counts. And trying to build these uh, representations from low-level features is, is a little bit hard. We never had any success doing that. Right? And the second challenge is, is in, in a lot of cases, we're dealing with noisy data or missing data. Right? If you look at an image like this, sometimes there is no text associated with it. Sometimes you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, some text could be meaningless. Right? Um, so so, so what, what can we do? And, and you know, we, we, we were building these kinds of models uh, 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 by looking at learning an, uh, a word pathway versus word, learning an image pathway and having this interaction of, of, of information propagating all the way up and down in this network, right? So it's not just a feed forward. We actually need to iterate uh, uh, through this model. And, you know, if we, if we ask the model to say, well, can you actually generate text given images? This is what it does, right? So in, in some cases, it does fairly well. Um, in terms of trying to have a little bit of understanding what these images are representing. Uh, um, you know, this is, this is a failure case. It's always fun to show failure cases. And again, this is generative models given an image. You're generating tags associated for that image, like, particularly like this one, right? It thinks it's a Barack Obama's. Uh, and it's just because in, this is done on the Flickr data set, and there's a lot of face images and a lot of Obama images, so the model is uh, making these mistakes, so it's, uh, it's fun. One thing I want to point out is that, you know, we obviously do better than competitive methods, that's fine, but one thing I want to point out is that the performance improves if we give our models unlabeled data, right? So we have access to, uh, 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 we can try to train a language model on Wikipedia, and we have access to millions of images of the web, and we can leverage that information in trying to build uh, uh, a better representation uh, there. And finally, let me just show you one example, uh, and I'm done. Uh, this is a particular model where I condition on the image, and because this is a generative model, I'm trying to generate the distribution of the words. Right? And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you a Markov chain Monte Carlo running, but pay attention to this uh, uh, part. It's just because it's, it's, it's going to be trying to explain what it sees uh, in the, in the image. So it's sort of, this is, it says sea, beach, island, vacation, travel, ocean, uh, water, Canada, BC, British Columbia, Italy, water, sea, boat, Italia, um, 
see sky blue urban. So what, what it does is it basically goes through different regions in that space and has multiple alternative explanations as to what's happening uh, uh, in that image. And again, this is only possible because we're building this uh, 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 a generative model, right? And so it's sort of, um, had some different explanations as to as to what's going on, and I'm done. Thank you.